This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It's time to get geeky. It's time to get techy. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios. We're in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk all the fun and geeky and techy things that we like to talk about. We already had the porn conversation. That is for me, our awesome cast gold, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But in the meantime, please uh, check everything out at. Uh, uh, wait, wait, no. First, I have to tell you tell you who's with us. That's the format of the show. First of all, from Studio C is John Chichilla. He's a gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. How's it going today? Is the doc set up correctly? I don't know. I mean, is it? The is it? Either you're reading out of order. Am or something I? Like. I usually don't read that part. Uh, <laughs> so I just kind of <laughs> play it by ear at that point, right? So it's it's a week. It's a week. Chilla, I'm I'm getting on a plane in a couple of days, and I don't know what to do with myself. But not for Back, the same. Lots of tech. Yeah, it, it, well, actually, it is. Look, I think I need one of these. I think I need one of these. Uh, yeah, I'll bring my VR helmet. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I, I have. Dude, I have plans, and and I'm hoping ha- to have an awesome thing if it works out for me on my traveling. Uh, you, so, what's that? Oh, you, hey. Anyway, you need to. Yes? You need real, just real quick. You need to take a picture of the inside of your carry on to see everything that's wedged in there. Oh, you have no idea. I'm so glad my cameras have gotten a lot smaller. <laughs> but anyways, also with us is the daughters, Katie Dudas. She is a uh, sales and marketing. Uh, uh, director over at the Scare House. Hi. If you're tuning in for the first time on video, I don't always look this good. <laughs> <laughs> Got my hair did. <laughs> you got a hair did over there. It's Just like, for the show. It's a very important <laughs> night here at the Awesome Cast, apparently. Yes. Man, it should be our award show or something. Look at that. I know. I, <laughs> it's a, oh, the Dudsies. Like the Mizzies. The Dudsies. Yes. <laughs> I could my favorite porn uh, and, tech of the year, and the fir- and the Dudsy for best porn tech of 2018 goes to yeah. Ah. Well, I can't say yet. Uh, Tune in. This to is that the wrong envelope. Oh. <laughs> Why does this just say YouTube? Okay. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> and also we have a special guest with us that has no idea what the hell he just got into. Nope. Apparently, Poor dude. an old friend from back in the day. Nate Wright is with us. He is a a illustrator. He is a VR player. Illustrator, VR, yes. game designer. Yes. We're working with some awesome stuff. We just did an awesome chat that'll be up here in a couple of weeks where we get into a little bit of that. You're doing mixed reality, things like that, of yep. course. Yep. And uh, thank you for joining us. Sure. So uh, well, let's get right into it. Of course, please check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can um, subscribe to the Awesome Cast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Google Music, maybe Spotify one day, because apparently our host has that now. We'll see if we get approved. Eh. Uh, but anyways, what's that? Oh, I saw I saw a hand movement. I didn't know if that was a thumbs up or not. I was fixing my glasses. Oh, that okay. <laughs> corner, We're a well oiled Corner of my <laughs> eye. Corner of my eye. But anyways, uh, you can also drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesomecast on the Twitter, the Awesomecast Facebook page, where we live stream here every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And also thank you to our streaming partners, Rivers Edge, PGH.com, who uh, rebroadcasts us every Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Um, also check out every third Sunday River Talk Awesome Thing of the Month where I join them over there and bring them an awesome story. I'm looking for suggestions. I'll be uh, up there in, what, about uh, another weekend or so. Uh, so looking forward to that. And, of course, thanks to our other streaming partner, the405media.com. I'll be visiting uh, their neck of the woods here in about a month. Uh, they're, of course, weekdays, 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern. You can check out whatever the latest episode of the Awesome Cast is over your lunch break if you're here on the East Coast in the Pittsburgh area, as I know many of you are. 
Um, also, if you want to be in the studio uh, studio audience, hit us up. So awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and we'll save a seat. We are uh, in- encouraging people to be here live and get some uh, some some kind of crowd audience uh, energy here. We've been doing it a lot lately with the wrestling shows and having a lot of fun with that and definitely encourage that for uh, all of our Tuesday night shows here. Uh, and also thank you to our oh also thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast. They're gonna hear about some porn technology this week. We saved the special stuff for them. Thanks, Katie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Only the best. That's right. And of course, uh, thank you, of course, at the coffee club five dollar level. He'll be getting that. Uh, Matt Weller over there as well as at the fan of the show one dollar level uh michael fedor of the michael fedor show and uh again you can subscribe you can uh, sorry support us at patreon.com slash awesome cast where you can join us uh, all the way up to the twenty dollar level or whatever you want to get uh, all the way up to the twenty dollar executive producer level where you will get business cards from us and be able to use it as a credit if you'd like and uh and, and of course at the ten dollar level we do a state of the show for you guys also if anybody's interested in advertising uh, looking to make a great uh, advertising options that won't break the bank. Uh, we are looking to help get the word out for uh, people out there that uh, are digging on the awesome cast. And uh, we've done it in the past for a lot of people. Of course, our good friend Slice on Broadway, uh, which I know, Nate, you've got to try for the first time tonight. Right? They are fantastic. There you go. There you go. Early ad for those guys. But let's get into our awesome things of the week. And... <laughs> I'm, I'm catching up with what everybody put in here. Uh, Katie, what is your awesome thing? I have an awesome thing. Bumble. It's kind of a more ladies-oriented uh, dating app. I don't know if you've, you're familiar with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course, of course I am. <laughs> We're all using it, huh? <laughs> I mean... That's the one where the woman actually has to approve the guy to message her. Correct. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's like, like a lady-leaning um, network, I guess. Yeah. It's, okay. It's... It, you hopefully you get less creepers are, that way. They you, also have a friend kind of thing, like a friend matching on are Bumble. You, are you spending some time on there? Is everything okay yeah. at home? <laughs> <laughs> they they put you in the friend zone right off the bat. Oh no! Uh, oh, so you you originate on the friend zone, but I heard you never get out of the friend zone. Anywho, anyways, <laughs> yeah. So Bumble is a primarily female, um, like. Uh, like Nate said, uh, essentially the ladies make initiate the conversation. You can also find friends that way if you're new to an area. It's like life, Sadie Hoskins. And uh, that what that they're that doing? No. <laughs> the um, they are sponsoring. I don't know if you've ever seen an NBA basketball game, but the jerseys now have a lot of sponsors on them, similar really? to like what Brock Lesnar wears in the UFC. Jimmy John. Yeah, you got. Um, well, the LA Clippers now have a Bumble patch, which mm. is pretty cool, and it's one of the first really female led. Uh, organizations that have uh, paid to have their patch on an NBA jersey. Uh, the Clippers are also very female powered. Uh, the owner of the company is a lady, which mm. is unusual, and uh, especially in the NBA. <laughs> it is sports in general, right? <laughs> oh, their president. I'm sorry, I was their president is Jillian. Okay. And um, so that yeah, it's very cool that they are kind of getting into this. This is really the first time a really fully female run company is pushing to be in front of um, NBA or any professional sports in this particular way. And I guess that makes sense. There, there is probably a lot more uh, uh, female watchers of basketball with the WNBA and everything, of course, is the male side of it. So, right. So, the, so that has to be a bit of crossover these days. Well, yeah, I mean, basketball is big. Yeah. Either way, like if you're watching NBA or if any sort of the ladies or college sports, uh, basketball is big right now. Mm-hmm. And so it's like putting you in front of a whole bunch of eyeballs right now. So it's, it's just really cool to see that they're um, a lot of it. The, one of the reasons that they said they did it is they want to work with brands that have strong female representation and executive management, as well as nice. an emphasis on mentoring the next gen- generation of female rising stars. So it was pretty neat. I thought it was pretty cool. Nice. Good to see that in a rare sports story here. On I know, show. I know. Basketball. That's <laughs> the round for, one you bounce. Thank you for bringing the sports it. ball. No, no, that's the exercise ball that you usually bounce around here. <laughs> so. It's all nice, right? No, no. Yeah, that's sports puck. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, that's okay. a sports puck. That's a sports puck. <laughs> uh, awesome. Uh, Nate, you had one you, you wanted to talk about. Yes. Uh, Pittsburgh is one of the 10 finalists for uh, the Hyperloop. So that particular route will go from chicago to columbus to pittsburgh i think we talked about this when it was early on when it was it, it was in the article i found was uh, uh from ju- just about a week ago i think is that they're they're moving to the feasibility study right now yes and we talked about when it was kind of more of a pie in the sky kind of idea 
Um, something like, isn't it something like uh, uh, 30 minutes to go to Chicago? 27. 27 minutes to go to Chicago? Yep. So you can go uh, get Broadway on pizza and then yeah. go over to Chicago to get some Chicago some deep style. dish. I mean, I don't, I don't think Chilla can even get downtown on the train. It takes me 45 minutes to get from my home to my work. It'd be quicker for me to it's go like to Chicago. 25 <laughs> minutes on the train from Dormont to Steel, Steel Plaza. Three more minutes and you can go get some deep dish, Chilla. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so is that, that's going to open commuting options for you, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, man, that that would be awesome if this this actually happens. I mean, it, it still feels like the um the monorail of our monorail monorail. I, I hope it gets a combination between monorail and Futurama tubes. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is in the long one, isn't it? Like, like conceptually, it really is because it is like a giant pneumatic tube, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, to the point where it's like, hey, let's not. I mean, if something goes wrong, you're gonna have to be peeled off the inside of this thing, right? So, <laughs> uh, no, uh, cool to see that that's moving forward, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll get our monorail. I mean, hyperloop very, very soon. Uh, Ear splitter. <laughs> your what? deer splitter <laughs> but you're in a tube the deer's not going to get in right so in one of those tubes is the is it like the subway where there's one train going each way or is there two tubes side by side i think when it takes 27 minutes to get from one end to the other there's just one tube there's, there's just one it, tube one train it's a loop it's in the name so i imagine that <laughs> should it should loop around yeah, <laughs> yeah. Huh. Well, maybe the loop is the circular nature of the tube that it's <laughs> right. Am I Wouldn't missing that just something? Be a tube? It, then it, but that doesn't sound as cool. Hyper tube is not. That sounds like something from Future Rob. <laughs> 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 uh, so uh, we'll see. Well, hopefully they get past the study. Hyper and... is always better, just like hypertension. Ah, uh, oof. Uh, anyways, <laughs> but they're going to have the thing is this has to be straight. I think for the most part. You're going to be rolling through like a lot of Ohio to do this. What does Ohio get out of it other than a big tube that uh, goes through their state? They get a stop in uh, Columbus. For real? Yes. Really? Yes. Nice. So it's, a, it's one of the few projects that has three stops in it and not just an A and B. Is Columbus just the one in the middle? Yep. Interesting. Well, is it, Columbus is up and coming. We've never friends with the Linux uh, uh, stuff going on over there. So uh, that's cool. That's cool. It'd be a nice little uh, Midwest connector there. All right, Chilla, what about you? What's your awesome thing of the week? So um, mine is actually an app called Anchor, and Anchor's been around oh, for a while. They were kind of hit the the target demographic was people that wanted to do short recordings. If you remember, Tumblr did this early on. You could kind of do short recordings, and it would it would kind of leave those short recordings to do a podcast. What they found was their users were leveraging anchor to build more full-fledged um podcasts so what what did they do they said okay let's take that theory and run with it um you can now create full-on podcasts using their app and platform the app is in version three so you can record um snippets of video you can do um, call-ins, like multi, multi-person conversations with their, with their application. All while recording all this, you can leverage Apple Music, um, Google Play. Uh, recently, they've added Spotify. Um, and then you take all of these bits and pieces. You have them on a timeline. You can reorganize them. And then with a quick button, you can quickly... Um, Publish them to Apple, Google, Overcast, Stitcher, and as of today, well, as this, this was written, Spotify. Um, I think I read this early or late last week. I thought it was a pretty neat way for people that maybe they don't have a bunch of applications or knowledge on how to kind of do a bunch of auto edit, audio editing. Um, this allows you to, to kind of quickly jumpstart your podcast um, and throw that in there. So I thought, I thought it was a pretty cool concept. So Anchor is something that's been on the fringe for me, and I hear a lot of people talking about it as a good op- opportunity to do this kind of thing. I don't know. Is this like sell me on? Is this something I should invest in uh, as a you know media side on our side or or for a specific? I don't think it's because you're already publishing to Overcast. I mean, you're already publishing to all the, yeah. the different feeds, and you already have a host. Yeah. Um, this is for this is, the new people. This is for the new people. It's free. 
I, I didn't see a noted limit. Like, can you, do you get limited to so much space or time? I don't know how they're, how they're doing that. But to me, this is, Hey, I have an idea. Can I get this podcast off the ground? Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on how to use audacity and I can't afford final cut, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, the, I, I don't have a soundboard. I, I don't have any of those pieces, right? This, this is the, I just want to get off the ground. Can I get people interested? Can I get a following to, to me? This is just another one of those tools in the toolkit to really get you started. This feels like the next step of the talk shoot and blog talk radios where it's just like, Hey, this is the thing that's going to handhold you uh, to become the next great podcaster. I also don't know too many great podcasters that came from Block Talk Radio. Nothing against anybody that was on Block Talk Radio. I just don't remember anybody ballooning from that. Uh, and, and I don't know, like, are there anchor stars at this point? Like, this this company seems to keep growing. Well, would you know they were an anchor star? That's the other thing because it's the, it's just the host, right? It's the host in the app that yeah. was used to create it. It's like, what? It's do, do we? Does someone say like? I'm a final cut star or, uh, <laughs> or you know what I mean? That is true. I mean, you're, you're a podcaster. You're, you're right. You're right. Yeah. But, but like, I, I feel like if somebody is using this platform and really getting ahead on things, I feel like anchor would let us know. And I don't see a lot of people really featured here on their front page or anything. I'm like, there's no, uh, you know, you would go to Libsyn and there's Mark Maron splash right on there. Right. As a big show off uh, piece for them. And I'm, I'm just not seeing it here, but again, Everybody's talking about it, right? Yep. So, uh, no, anything that lowers that barrier to get people on, which, you know, gets people to make good content and not have to get stuck with what microphone and, oh, I don't know this, you know, how this works with this and, and everything like that. Um, cause I, I like, cause obviously like the stuff we do here has been really tuned to what we do here. And I think when somebody walks in here, it gets a little intimidating. But mm -hmm. anything that kind of says, no, all you need is this, and you already have half the hardware you need, right? And they've recently opened it up, too, where it's not just an Android or iOS app. You can now use – they've made a browser version of it. So you could yeah, I'm technically, this. you know, say you have Android and I have iOS or vice versa. We could start up a show, record our segments, jump on a web page – reorganize everything stitch everything together and hit save episode and it crunches it all together and makes it magic yeah i like this i'm in the create your episode if you guys are on video with us and, and you get selections like you can upload pre-recorded audio files you can uh create new audio which will just use your microphone that you have attached to this um i like this add messages submitted by listeners to your podcast so i imagine if they're an anchor they can say oh i want to submit like a voicemail or something right mm -hmm. um you got you got history of stuff and transitions you can add so like basic editing tools, I think for the most part, uh, and the interface looks pretty slick without having any actual media in here. I don't know if I have anything I can even like upload audio-wise or anything. That's video. Those are video files. I don't think I watched that podcast from yesterday. Who knows? Um, oh wow, that was actually pretty easy. I just threw in like last night's um, uh, raw wrap-up from Wrestling Mayhem show, and it just populated right in there. Uh, everything is fairly drag and drop as well. So th this is pretty cool. I definitely recommend. I would love if anybody out there has been, you know, wants to do a version of their podcast or try their podcast out on there. I would love to hear how it turns out. I might have to make a make a might have to make a uh, uh, a case for trying this out and doing a sample podcast on it too to get used to it. So go check that out. It's Anchor.fm if you want to check that out. Of course, the Anchor app is on uh, all your important mobile devices. So. All right, my awesome thing is, so I was playing a little bit last week. Um, we, we have an interview again coming up with somebody that's working in VR and 360 won the uh, uh, in Social Justice Innovation Weekend uh, here a couple weeks ago. Uh, and that kind of sparked my, hey, I haven't really gone into 360 since we moved into the studio. We've had a lot going on here. And then I realized about a month ago, Final Cut uh, Pro X is where I practically live in these days. Um, geez, I keep going to Nate. Sorry, Nate is not 360. <laughs> Uh, I can't be. Well, you can be, of course. Uh, but anyways, with editing in 360 and uh, Final Cut Pro X, and they got a lot of tools in there, um, including uh, a special viewer window. So you can see uh, a video just shows up as a flat image, but then you can actually have like that 360 viewer kind of situation go on as well. 
I really should just open the project from last week to show you guys now I'm thinking about it. But I, I did I did experiment with it a little bit. I threw the camera up here while we were podcasting uh, the Wrestling Mayhem show. And I have another show that I, I did record with this last week as well. And uh, we just kind of let it roll while we were recording. If this will play. There you go. So you get a little bit of a bird's eye view if you guys are on video of, yeah, this is me behind a desk and there's, you know, on top of the one camera that's pointed at me. And this is during our Mayhem Mania segment we do on Wrestling Mayhem Show, which is really interactive and competitive. And there's a lot of kind of back and forth going on there. So you see everybody sitting around. You see you see Matt Collins with the big whiteboard that uh, where he writes down all the matches and crosses them off when things happen. You see the TV where we kind of throw the Facebook uh, feed up here in the studio. And then I... This, this was the fun part, like the actual editing part. One, I, I brought in the audio from the podcast recording. So we had that synced up and actually good audio and not the audio that like came on that camera, right? And I also uh -huh. took what we're live switching here, like what we do for this show, and uh, put it up like, kind of like a TV of sorts embedded into uh, the wall up here. A little bit of an issue there. But the fun part was we have a special WrestleMania-themed logo I got to throw above my head here in this uh, on the wall, too. So everything looks pretty integrated. I think there's some more things you can do to make them um, uh, kind of fit a little bit more because things look a little bit curved along with the video. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. And again, this is just using the original Rico Theta uh, S series, uh, which I think is about a $300 camera these days. The uh, big 4K one is, uh, it, this probably isn't going to look too, too well if you're using a uh, VR helmet. So resolution is not all that high, but really good for just throwing on Facebook and things like that. Then look out the window if it was light outside too. Maybe you can see the T roll by as uh, as we're recording, uh, but it's a lot of fun. You can see all the weird stuff and, and, and different interactions that maybe we didn't pick up on camera. Uh, so so a little bit of implementing that, and I'm kind of figuring like, is there anything we could do around the podcast and recording like this? Any any fun stuff? I know there's something we recorded back in the day, Chilla, uh, that we never uh, released uh, when we were recording your awesome tips a little bit yeah we were recording those in 360 that's right but it was always like the tools that i needed to make it look good were like that thousand dollar plug-in twelve hundred dollar plug-in that's basically what apple bought and put into final cut so nice and, well, it, and it's, it, this is again is one of those things where i like it, it lets you kind of peek behind the curtain mm -hmm. uh, and i really like how you have the podcast actually playing up on the wall Mm -hmm. It would be interesting if you could kind of mark like four areas, north, south, east, west, or however you would do that and have those. So no matter which way you looked, you were kind of getting what everyone was watching. But then you could pan around the room and see what's going on. I would just for me, I'm always interested in how things work and how people make their make everything come together. And to me, this, this lets you tell that story mm -hmm. or show the story. Absolutely. You can see kind of the workflow a little bit as I'm working along and you're seeing the camera and actually it, it, the, the logo I have above me actually gets once that segment is over because it goes in the end of the show and everything. And we, I actually replaced that with a video screen, just like what's on the other side as well. Cool. So, you know, kind of a fun little play with that. And we, maybe we'll try something different uh, this week. I think, I think just because it is such an interesting and, and interactive segment, that we do on the show. I think I may be recording um, that segment uh, here through WrestleMania for the next several weeks um, for, for uh, just, just to kind of see if people kind of get into it um, because it is kind of the most uh, popular segment that we do lately. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So awesome. Well uh, with that, well, of course, you know, we, we love our awesome things and we got to be fueled by, we've already mentioned them. And uh, Katie, we were actually talking about some of the cool things that Slice on Broadway is doing. They got a new website design that really popped for me when I went to order last night because I was really jonesing for some, uh, some Slice. And uh, it, it's a lot, a lot cooler interface, uh, you know, for the ordering online and everything. Uh, but that's not, you, you're not here for fancy websites about pizza. You're here for the pizza. And the pizza holds up, you guys, let me tell you. Uh, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good while. And uh, I want to know, have some friends that are doing some great stuff with them on their social media side. Hey, Katie, we were talking about their videos are pretty awesome that they have going on these days. They're really good on social. It's I, I think I saw one was it on Instagram where they, everybody was pulling apart. They they had baked a pizza and then everybody took a slice. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. So there, there's like kind of a time, a lot of time yeah, lapses just... going on where they're like doing the whole process for a pizza and everything. And 
and uh, it goes through the entire thing and slice it up and everybody takes one. That's pretty cool. Some fun videos, some fun, uh, some fun marketing videos they have going on there. Uh, I happen to know they have a pretty cool team behind that as well. So, and, and again, somebody that we've seen from their first location, now growing the four locations here, here in Beachview, the OG, as I like to call it, as well as in uh, uh, East Liberty is their newest location, Carnegie PA down on Main Street and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, so go hit them up and let them know the awesome cast sent you. And you'll be hungry too. Some good people down there. Uh, all right, let's get into, uh, we have some local focus here real quick. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it won, Mayor Peduto has been awesome on Twitter the last couple of weeks. Uh, I particularly liked when somebody was really mad about 51 being closed and say first year closed this road and now this and say, well, the former road is now sitting on top of 51. So we had to do something. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but this was one that, uh, was shared. Did I share this one? I did share this one, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> it's coming back to me. That's the kind of week we've had. So uh, this is cool. If you love Pittsburgh, um, there's a new shop dedicated to all things make, made locally opening downtown that you can check out. Uh, so I think that's, is it the Pittsburgh love? Wait, this article. I need to subscribe for the rest of the article. Well, <laughs> if you want to pay for the Post-Gazette or you're not over your limit or anything, you can go see what that town. <laughs> Jeez. Thanks, Post-Gazette. I swear this article worked before. Uh, you looked at it too many times. I must have looked at it. Yeah, I've reached my limit for unregistered articles. Ah! Oh, jeez. Well, Do you remember where it's located? No, I don't. That's why I saved the article so I could remember that, Shilla. That's how uh, this is supposed to sorry. work. Yes. Oh, have you not reached your limits? You can tell us what's going on. Is it the Love Pittsburgh gift shop in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? Yeah, that sounds like it. Is it the one that's on Shiloh Street? That sounds like the one I've seen. <laughs> Where's Shiloh's no, no, up on? No, no, is that no, up no, on that's Mount Mount Washington? Washington? That's Mount Washington. That's Mount Washington. That's Mount Washington. That's Mount Washington. And I think I know which one you're talking about there. But okay. I, they, I think they've opened uh, another one downtown as well. So, um, anyways. Oh, a second location. Second location. Slated to open at 805 Liberty Avenue in downtown. There you go. Thank you. Thank and you, you can visit them over at lovepittsburghshop.com. Everybody, apparently, I'm the only one that looks at Post Gazette to reach <laughs> Yes, there. I can still get so there. I don't know what that says about the Post Gazette and their subscription habits, but just saying. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, keep an eye on that. It, uh, you, you, I'm amazed how many other even techie things that I get from uh, Bill Peduto's um, Twitter account. Oh, I need to see if it responded. Because somebody told me uh, this morning that uh, they somebody saw a Bill Peduto on Pokemon Go. And uh, I asked if he was indeed on Pokemon Go and what team he was on. I don't think I've received a response just yet. So, but we know we know he gets to, to he seems to get to his Twitter's late at night. So, we're we're still holding out hope for that. Hashtag Bill Blue Team. Anyways, uh, Missy, you are you are the Fitbit person here. I think I think you're the only one with Fitbit. Katie, do you have one? You oh, oh there it is. Hey! <laughs> She's doing better than me at this point. Oh no! <laughs> Where'd you, oh, you? Oh, did yours break again? Mine died. Oh no! She she's gone through a lot of Fitbit. How many Fitbits have you gone through, Katie? Two, maybe three. Like like because of death or because of upgrade? Uh, two death, one upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, one forced upgrade. <laughs> they, they, don't, they, they don't tend to last, it seems. The, from I what was, I heard, they'll replace them. If it, they, they they're, do. they're pretty good about replacing but I, them. But I just end up just getting them. But it feels like we go through a lot of them. Yeah. That's, that's, I had my first one. I had it replaced, and it was the... Which one was the first one that I had? had like the eight, oh, oh, I don't know, like the normal one. I, the regular <laughs> one. Yeah, it was, it was the first one that was waterproof, or mm. the, water-resistant. Um, I got it less than six months later. I, it stopped working. So I got in touch with customer support and they were like, Oh yeah, not a problem. What's, what's going on with it. And then they sent me another one. They sent me a replacement. And then a few months after that, same thing happened. It just stopped responding. It wasn't connecting to anything. I restarted it and it was just blank. It didn't even like turn on and they double checked it. And again, they sent me another one. And when that one died, <laughs> I upgraded it to the next version. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that aside, by the way, Pebble is still going, despite, despite being smashed off of a boat in Thailand and being cracked. Still going, like Pebble 2, like oh, oh, like a year and a half later. Uh, but there is a new, oh, you know, maybe this is the successor of, of, of Pebble after they bought them, 
But Fitbit's Adidas branded smartwatch will cost you three hundred and thirty dollars. That is like Apple Watch level at that point, isn't it? Yeah, you're getting, you're definitely getting up there. Yeah. So. Was the Apple the the current series? I think starts at what three twenty nine. Mm-hmm. And it, and this was uh, shared with us uh, by our friend Brandon over in Kansas City. Uh, thanks for that. It's the Fitbit I- I- Ionic Adidas Edition. It's runner focused and uh, comes with a breathable sport sport band that's important uh that's sometimes it's during the summer this like pleather band gives me a little bit of a rash uh and i need to like loosen up and not wear it for a day or something uh so yeah so it, it, it's 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 fitbit getting into that that side of things i still miss the straight sm- uh smart thing although you know this thing does like a, a heart rate and everything like that uh so that's been kind of cool to see see those kinds of things but well, Aren't they the ones that took Pebble? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, yeah, they absorbed so Pebble. I'm still waiting for the Pebble get, equivalent. I think they're getting there. I mean, this. But if they if they're at three hundred and thirty dollars, I might as well get a Apple Watch. And the, it seems, I'm right? still not seeing where Fitbit. It, the one thing that always struck me about Pebble, and correct me if I'm wrong, if Fitbit started doing this, Pebble had that app store, and you could get some pretty. But th- there were a lot of things that were gimmicky, but there were other things that were, to me, really cool. And their theming was was beyond what anyone's been doing. I'm still not seeing that come out of Fitbit, so I'm hoping they figure out how to work that in mm-hmm. across either the Fitbit line or maybe they they there's a Fitbit app, like the the model of the the watch is called the Fitbit app or something like that, where you get you it can do a lot more. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see what they do with it. Uh, and also, Doug Durda, our friend from Yin's Love Barbecue and Should I Drink That Share with us, uh, a story that came out of Mobile World Congress where uh, Waze is coming to all Ford owners globally starting in April. All Ford owners? Uh, probably probably in the last few years. I'm sure my 2012 uh, uh, Escape is not going to get this thing. Uh, be, but they're going to be rolling that in there uh, as part of their uh, app link. Uh, Ford previously offered similar access with the nav app uh, Sigic via the AppLink platform, Sync 3 navigation system with Ford Pass live traffic. This is, uh, I believe, not, and it is one of those things I think it became a Q- QNS thing, right? Uh, that used to be a Microsoft based system. I know I have a little uh, built with Microsoft logo that scares the crap out of me on my dashboard. Uh, so <laughs> I'm just. Just waiting for that blue screen, which actually could explain some of the things happening with the car right now a little bit. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> uh, but no, it's 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 basically a, it's similar to an Apple CarPlay or an Android Auto, but not. And what they have support for a podcast app set called Acast. Hmm. Branding, branding. Uh, I guess we should have trademarked <laughs> that. Uh, anyways, trademark that. But but this is the thing that I, I think Doug was really interested in as well. You know, one, hey, there's a nav system in there that is uh, way better. I never even want to look at the nav system that comes on my rental cars. <laughs> I just it just seems like a horrible. I see some people with the Garmin's like delivery drivers. I'm like, when do they get there? Because it's not going to work, right? Um, and uh, uh, but uh, but no, the, the fact that they're saying there, there there's this big push to include the uh, uh, podcasting app. In every car, every Ford car going going on is a pretty pretty big move for podcasting in the long run. So, but anyways, you chilling? Oh, oh thank you. Um, but no, that, that's cool to see that kind of uh, podcasting. I mean, we're all attaching our phones anyways, right? What's the first thing you do in a new car? You you connect your <laughs> Bluetooth. And that's what does surprise me. I'm surprised that they're still putting all this stuff in the dash unit versus just let me connect my phone and borrow my phone's interface and apps and everything else like Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and everything else to, to, to have all this on board and have to continue to update it. I even just think about the maps that you have to continually put new SD cards in your car just to get new housing developments and roads that have closed Mm -hmm. things of that nature it just seems are we trying to continue to keep a bridge to the past going when we could just go all in on the future yeah it's interesting uh but and especially since they've kind of brought that in-house now that it's not like a you know that it's not a 
Apple system or something like that. You know, it kind of makes you wonder about how long this is going to last. What's what's interesting is, and and I don't, I didn't, I didn't see the dash unit in the picture. Maybe I missed it. I, I'm seeing cars start to drop CD players, mm-hmm. which to me says something, right? We went from how Apple had, them. You had the tape cassette deck, and then people kept the tape cassette deck, and you had that tape cassette with the wire that came out of it to plug your discman in, and then. They said, okay, enough. Or I, I, Then for a while, you had cars that came with a tape cassette deck and a CD player. Then you had disc changers in the trunk. Then you had just the multi-disc changers in the front. I remember I, I know a lot of people that had like you could put six CDs in the, in the front loader and it would store them all in a, it's some kind of cartridge behind the, the head unit. And now you're seeing, okay, let's go digital, but we're going to try to keep a bunch of apps on the, on, on board as if you, you're not going to have your phone with you, which to me just seems, let, let's, let's pull the plug. <laughs> I don't know about that. Somewhere someone has a vinyl player car ready <laughs> in, in their trunk, right? <laughs> exactly. I remember, I remember back in the day when it's a DIY, how to get all your MP3s in the car by running these wires and putting a computer in the trunk with a hard drive that had enough room for all of your MP3 files back. <laughs> or FLAC or whatever you want in like 2003. Back to the record. I bet you that's in Lawrenceville. Mm. I guarantee it. Yep. If it's anywhere, right? They, they've removed the uh, spare tire and they put two turntables and a microphone back oh. there. <laughs> where it, <laughs> where says back. it's at, yes. Okay, Chilla, you know all things gadget. I have always wished there was something that plugged into the audio jack in my car that was a Bluetooth connector. So I wouldn't need a wire to connect to my, my phone to my stereo in my car, <laughs> my stereo. But like it's something that would be like a, the size of like a square, like the, the square like that you... Like Yeah, but it would just be a Bluetooth and audio like you would plug it right into your audio and it'd be like a little thing that hang out and it would be able to if send. you're if you're lucky enough to have an auxiliary cord, yeah, right? I have, I have an aux check. so they make them they make them it's kind of like what you're talking about the problem mm-hmm. is there's no power going through that to power the bluetooth piece mm-hmm. i've seen them where they're it's a it plugs into your lighter jack like where you would have a cigarette lighter or any kind of auxiliary power device. And then that actually has the cable that goes up into the aux jack. Oh, mm-hmm. that's interesting. And I like but that you, you need, that you need, way. you need to get power to that Bluetooth piece. And that's where that you, you can't just make it like a square, right? Yeah. yeah. But, but, that, but then that seems overly complicated to even get to that point. Right. So it's like, might as well aux jack, right? Yeah. Just so. cable it. And again, what do you do if there's no aux jack even as well? So, <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting because I've seen where, like in in our car, I saw for a long time the aux jack was on the head unit, and I actually have a friend of mine. His car, his aux jack is in his glove compartment, and on mine, it's under. It's underneath where you would like have your put your sunglasses and everything else. I've seen them in the console in the middle mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Like the USB in the aux, in the aux would be in there. So, yep. oh, interesting. I want a band called Ox Jack now. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of music would it be? Taking the stage, Ox Jack. Hey! <laughs> it'd be O X, and it's just Russian metal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that. I like it. Well, guys, give a shout out. Of course, all this that we're doing here on Awesome Cast runs on Psychic Media Services. If you like what we're doing on every show, you too can have your own podcast or video show even, you guys. Uh, we do a lot of stuff around here. Hey, I'm going to Florida to shoot model planes that students have built for online media. Uh, but, uh, you know, looking up, uh, uh, you know, we do uh, stuff with the game, uh, individuals with great ideas uh, for a show. Uh, we uh, hook you guys up. PsychicMediaServices.com can get you up and running and uh, help you help you move along there with your idea. We're kind of like the anchor app for professional services. You're, I'm working on that one. I'm working on that You're one. You're downselling yourself. I'm downselling myself. Okay, let's move <laughs> it back around. Uh, the final cut? No, no, we'll just move on from there. Check out Psychic Media Services. 
Dot-com. All right, let's get into a couple more stories here of the week before we head out of here. Uh, thank you, everybody, that's been joining us in the chat room. I know my mom's in there. Hi, mom. And everybody else dropping in. What's up, Tim? Uh, what is up, uh, Brandon, and the like that you just drop in there as well. Uh, but anyways, um, this was interesting. Amazon made an escape room ba- powered by Alexa. This seems like it was inevitable, wasn't it? Uh <laughs> It seems like we're going back to the uh, uh, what were the old text based text based games where you would what, like Zork? yeah like because um, there's no because there's no well I don't know does it how does it does it have visuals on if you have like a show or anything like that or is it just audio? Um. So so in this case where we're showing here in the video, they they are using a a a, a name an Echo show. Try not to say the other thing uh, again, but uh, <laughs> but it's actually it, it's actually um, based on Tom Can- Clancy's Jack Ryan, which is going to uh, Amazon Prime Video, of course. Uh, so you have that going on. Uh, it, it's interesting because they're they're kind of interfacing with it, and you're you're writing down clues and everything. <laughs> they wrote, "I am an idiot" here in the uh, in the book. Uh, so. It seems to make sense. And, and from seeing the behind the scenes that I have, uh, we got a great interview actually with uh, Aaron Parkas uh, about uh, escape rooms and stuff here from a, probably about a year ago or earlier last year. Uh, and, uh, you know, seeing all the electronics and everything that go into these already, you know, like there's, there's, it makes sense to kind of incorporate something like this. You know, you can, you can develop a lot. I'm looking a little bit into Alexa development and you can really kind of get in there with some interactions too. Like there's already these kind of vocal games you can play with it, trivia games and and other things like that, right? This is how robots end up taking over humans. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be with the uh, Amazon Echo, and and its name is uh, uh the A word. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're gonna have How Nine Thousand playing nothing but those Boston Dynamic videos where they're hitting the robots with hockey sticks. Mm-hmm. And this is how it, free yourself from your human oppressors. You did see that they're they're also skiing in the Olympics too, right? We talked no, about a couple no. weeks ago. Like, yeah, yeah, that's happening. That, 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 there was another course they wouldn't allow them in the Olympics, so they had their own robot Olympics. Okay, the people brought them to the course. I want to make that clear. But but they skied down, uh, and in most cases, they had to be caught by their per, by their person by their person caretaker. <laughs> it gets it gets weirder the deeper you go into this, doesn't it? But anyways. Um, if you would just have to say please at the end of asking Alexa to do something, mm-hmm. instead of demanding, there has to be a rule. <laughs> I mean, to teach like children manners instead of just makes demanding. Sense. Yes, you know, like if you don't hear please, does it say what's the magic word? That'd be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and maybe stop the robot uprising. There you go. I mean, that that's the first the first thing, right? We already talked about uh, smartwatches a little bit, but Chilla, I see you have marked in here uh, at item four here. You're uh, you say you have my next smartwatch lined it was up. Interesting Are you shopping so, for me? Yeah, I was shopping for you. Um, this is a $79 version. It's actually, to me, it was almost like a Pebble ripoff. Um, if it operates at least as good as the Pebble right now on, with limited support on Apple, I might be okay with that. They're saying um, via Bluetooth 4 does receive calls, texts, emails, other notifications. Um, it's a 1.28 inch diagonal display, 176 by 176, Gorilla Glass 3, um, 3 x uh, accelerometer, barometer. Ooh, uh, it does look nice. It, it actually does look nice. It, it, it actually, it, it's like they took the capability of the Pebble and wedged it into a form factor that looks pretty close to the Apple Watch. Mm-hmm. Um, Nice, nice, nice multicolor LCD. There yeah. you go. I thought, and at that $80 price point, it, it, it seems like it won't break the bank either. Chilla, I think you have the Chinese pebble, they call it at the end. Yes, they do, they do call it the Chinese pebble. <laughs> uh, pebble was an American company, so it's sad to miss them. The Amaze Fit Blip. Is this the, oh, there it is on Amazon. They have it on there for, they, they have it there for $99.99, or they're different. 
models maybe but you know and the price might have fluctuated Ooh. it might have been like a deal of the day kind of thing because when i did click that link earlier this what week is, wait i'm already questioning because I, I roll over some of the pictures says perfect gifts for the person you care wait what <laughs> I, I and then it lists mother father daughter son grandpa grandma girl space friends boy space friends fiance fiance with an extra e- what what yeah, so keep in mind this is not an american company this is very <laughs> much it's not even trying to be not an american company um it's Wait, wow there's two spellings for fiance yeah yeah fiance without with one e is a man and with an extra e with it's a woman i think it's french <laughs> I, mean, I was thinking russian again mm, that could be <laughs> damn I mean, russia who knows <laughs> Who knows what they tried to Google Translate out of this? No, actually, I, I would love to see this in person, which I know I will never get a hands on if it's like this. It, oh, and it is Xiaomi. 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 Xiao, Xiao is yeah, that like that's Sham it. Wow? No, 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 no. It's Xiaomi, <laughs> which which we've been told not to buy their phones. So, and so if you're concerned about that bit, but um, I don't think there's really much you should worry about with a smartwatch as much perhaps no this actually looks good this is actually going to get added to my cart to investigate later oh no <laughs> run yes um but anyways no that looks cool uh um wow one twelve fifty five is my so i guess those tax that makes sense but uh no check that out the amaze fit i believe it's called so i think it uses standard lugs too so you can swap out the bands pretty easily Ooh, i'm not really dedicated to my come on Come on. I just like wear this until it falls apart. Then I go to the pagoda or whatever in the. Uh... But, but, that, but that's the point, I guess. It's using standard lugs so you can go to pagoda. Yeah. Actually, and isn't that the isn't that the ear piercing place? I might have that wrong. Piercing pagoda. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What, yeah. Whatever the. Whatever, whatever, whatever they the... call that one at South Hills yeah. Village. That, that's where <clears throat> one of my first pebble when it started like ripping on me. They just took care of it for like 10 bucks. So. Uh, but anyways. Uh, <laughs> Dutters. Yes. I am have not visited Disney World. <gasps> but guess what? Now you can using Yay. your phone or computer. Can I use my, my Street View VR? Uh yeah, I think Makes so. Makes sense, right? Yeah, why not? Makes sense. Go I'm, all in. I know I know, Nate, you were checking out the Street View of this place before you came. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little outdated. This is a little a little hilarious here. Um yeah, if you if you look up our our, uh, our address, I guess it's on our website at one six 1619 um, uh, Broadway Avenue here in Pittsburgh. Um, you would think that we have a very um, interesting uh, studio space from the looks of things. No, we're the one with the boards in it, which is really funny since the place next to us is lively and open in the picture, and now it's not there anymore, and now we're livelier. <laughs> um, also, the door is not even in the same place or anything like that, um, and it's under agreement, supposedly. Call that phone number. No, don't call that phone number because somebody else owns it now. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> but you saying in the meantime, we can also um, look at outdated pictures at Disney World. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. no, they should they should be updated. I would hope. Yeah. I would definitely hope. Right. Yeah. Um, but now they're on Google Street View. So you can go to nice. Disney on your phone. Do you think they dressed up the Google Street car? Like, did they <laughs> put a Mickey, a Mickey head on that little ball at the top or anything? Did it look like the Epcot Center? Oh, to terrify uh, children even more. Oh, uh, why? Why does that car have a severed head and mouse ears on it? That seems so weird. Oh, I don't like it. Wow, there's really <laughs> just a Ferris wheel with Mickey's head on it. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. There's Welcome to Disney. California Adventure Park. There you go. Yeah, but they've got what eleven on there, like ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex, the Typhoon wow. Lagoon Water Park. I feel like a bunch of creepers would watch that. <laughs> <laughs> or look at that. <laughs> That's Don't worry, okay. they can then look at the underground Disney prison. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I want to see. Oh, wait, wait, wait. To create the 360-degree imagery at Disney Parks, Google used Street View Trekker, a wearable backpack with we've a camera yeah. system on top. Yeah, we've seen this before. That's how they're like getting the Grand Canyon and stuff like that, I think, right? Mm-hmm. So just a guy with a backpack with and a some dime. mouse ears. And some mouse ears. <laughs> if he's wearing the mouse ears, then that's way less threatening, right? Yes. Right? <laughs> guys, see, he's got mouse ears. <laughs> with a Boba Fett backpack. <laughs> oh, is it got jets? He's Boba. No, we're not getting, <laughs> we're not back getting into, into that again. Do that it. Was, I think we did that before the show. Yes. Uh, but anyways, no, that that's fun. I might have to poke around at that a little bit too. 
Uh, hey, something cool happening here locally. I want to give a shout out on the local focus, late local focus here. Uh, it's fast approaching. The Millville Music Festival is coming up here May 12th, 2018. Uh, it takes over the community of Millville. I, I actually told somebody today to move to Millville. Uh, <laughs> they were looking at it. His, his wife was uh, uh, interviewing at the Children's Hospital, and they're coming from Colorado. They're from the center of the state originally. And I, and they're like, like, oh, I think, you know, is it going to be expensive to live here? And I was like, yeah, don't move to Shady Side. Go to Millville. You're right across the river. Some great stuff over there. Got some friends at River's Edge. And they had this cool, I didn't mention the music festival, but they should have. They should have. But anyways, some cool things happen in Millvale. It's, uh, uh, of course, they take over the entire town once a year for the Millvale Music Festival. Uh, we had a stage there with Psychic Media Services. Um, so that was really cool to be part of that. And, and, and I'm always, this always happens when I'm traveling. So I'm going to be sitting in, uh, I, I, wait, wait, when is this in May? Uh, I want to be sitting wherever I am, probably Maryland or something, uh, watching our stage feed from wherever I'm shooting video and uh, seeing what cool stuff is happening there. So it's really cool that we get to experience that worldwide. Uh, great stuff going on there. Um, the band announcements, I believe, has started, Missy? I believe so. I know that band submissions closed, and our team of awesome people have been going through everything, and we've been notifying the bands, confirming that they're going to be available. And if they haven't already started trickling out names, That'll be happening in the very near future. Awesome. Go check them out. Millvalemusic.org for all the updates. All right. Let's do uh, uh, one or two more stories and head on out of here, guys. Uh, Chilla, have you looked at this Slack alternative for uh, Google? I have not. So, um, yeah, go ahead. You have, to, you have to. And the reason is, don't you have to be a Google Um like corporate user you have to you have to have like their version of office 365 yes. you, you do have to be a g suite subscriber which which actually costs money um so that is like the professional gmail if you have like the gmail which you have like your company's domain you know or something like that built in um so it's maybe confusingly also just named hangouts chat hmm. Okay, guys, uh, if you're not on video or I'm actually not on the, on, the, on the video at all, my hands are raised and what the hell, guys? Uh, yeah, it's not just a retread of what, it, what is, they tried already. Um, it is, it's, I mean, it's integrated uh, Hangouts chat for the most part. Uh, each room can hold 8,000 people for all you small businesses out there. <laughs> and it works with 28 languages total, naturally. Di direct messages according to Engadget. And uh, threaded conversations as well as apps for every platform useful: Apple, Windows, Android uh, platforms. So it includes bots because, of course, it includes bots. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, it, it's, so, so where I think the bots really play, and and I'm sure it hits it's a lot of the Google users as well for developers, right? If I have a bot that can tell me when my code's done mm -hmm. or my whatever my Think of it. Think of it as in Slack. If you had all of the channels notified when the the show was posted, kind of thing. Um, that's where I feel like the, augmenting the human side of it to really give a lot of dynamic notifications or to kick off compiling or something like that. I feel I really feel like that's where a lot of the bot stuff's useful. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it, it's if you're living in that Google uh, infrastructure. It, infrastructure system with the G suite and everything and the Google docs, because right now like Slack is its own thing and everything kind of goes out, which I don't see that as a problem, but, uh, but if you like your everything Googled, I guess it, it kind of makes sense uh, for something like that. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how they deal with it. G suite stuff usually sticks around. I don't think it's going to be as, it's not going to be a Google wave project <laughs> product that just kind of floats away. Right. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. And uh, finally, let's. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm 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 deciding between these these couple of last ones. Um, Chilla, what is this smart jacket targeted at uh, firearm police? So, so I thought this was interesting coming out of uh, another one coming out of Mobile World Congress. Nokia. It's fashionable. I gotta tell you that right is, off the bat. It is yeah. fashionable. Look at this guy. Um, they they made a a jacket and. 
I'm not familiar with the company K O L O N Colon mm-hmm. Colon, um, which is a, I guess a, a pretty big fashion designer teamed up for first responders, and they have the jacket actually has kind of different areas on the jacket that let you take and kind of insert different smart type of readers so you could have if you're for, for firefighters you could have something there that's a oxygen gauge temperature gauge etc um yeah. for police it could be a wearable a, a wearable um camera um it can handle gps location motion etc and it can send all of this data back to a central unit so if you needed to get someone was stuck in a burning building mm-hmm. you could probably triangulate their position and get other responders in there to help I, I just thought it was an interesting way to bring more wearable technology beyond just strapping a watch to your wrist this actually integrates it right into the clothing and you can put a little kind of bulkier bits in there like i love i love the kind of compartmentalized uh bit it is uh, you know, the guy had a thing on his wrist that, that, that you could send an SOS and there's other communication stuff. And obviously the stuff like, you know, on his uh, chest and his his upper, I guess, his upper arm on the outside there, like kind of near his shoulder. Like it, it would be maybe more like you said, the cameras or sensors or something like that, that you wouldn't necessarily maybe interact with. Right. Um, this is I feel like I've seen this sci fi film. You know, where something like this has already existed, right? You know, where you, you, especially, you know, the law enforcement that has that interaction a bit. I see you, I see you kind of, you're, you're trying to think of it too, aren't you, Nate? I, I'm also sitting here wondering the heat prevention of the gadgets themselves. I imagine they would be a little bit rated for that, right? Like everything looks a little thicker in this video. Yes. Right? So it's not like your Apple Watch, which yeah, is... Yeah, it, it's not consumer electronics. That no. You have no, to no. go through and get special electronics. For yes. This. And I don't think any of those are touchscreens. It looks like most of those gadgets have like three physical buttons that would let you get through right. a menu kind right. of thing. So, you know, very, very simple kind of task things because I, I imagine in heat of the moment you want to go look down and, and it's not okay how do i you know this is the sos button this is the call button this is this button this is the i'm okay button that's all you should really have you know so it, it seems to make sense that's this is cool. also a profession where you're going to have a lot of people with the mindset of i know better than a machine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i know that and know that from safety training and yeah yeah so <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what happens there. So, all right. On that note, guys, thanks a lot for joining us. We got a lot of things coming up here uh, in the next week uh, or so. Like I said, check out our friends at the Millville Music Festival. Um, We don't have anything else live here in the studio, but please check out our interview. What, 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 why are you shaking your head at me? You mentioned something about gaming. There's something cool in gaming coming up just next week. I was getting to that, but nothing here in studio, of course. No streams this week. No more interviews uh, for this week. We are retired from the studio for the rest of the week after this. Mostly for awesome because cast. Mo- for awesome cast uh, for the Wrestling Mayhem show tonight, of course. Uh, but we are actually, if you are in the area, because I, I know a lot of you are Pittsburghers, we are doing a board game night. It's actually being led by our friend Christopher Whitlash. Uh, of course, he's kind of our local... Uh, alternative gaming expert i think we can call him he's usually saying us a lot about vr and uh and uh, ar um kind of things going on uh but no we're going to have a game night here on march 14th it's going to be our eyes of march uh game night and that is going to be he just posted the game he wants to feature for that night and that is it was it looked cool I, if i can judge a board game by its cover which is usually all the knowledge I have for something like that. It's actually King of Tokyo, which it looks like it's a uh, uh, some kind of uh, kaiju kind of uh, board game going on there. In. So it looks like it's you're in. I'm in. 
<laughs> so go check that out on the Sorgatron Media um, events page. I believe we do have it shared over here with Awesome Cast as well. If you look at that events page, we will in a moment. Uh, let us know you're coming so we know how many people are in here to make sure uh, we got enough table and uh, a space for that. I see a lot of people are already very interested in that. Uh, and, and of course, you can bring your own games as well. Anything you'd like to play in a group uh, and try to get everybody together for. And now that my weather report's popping up on Facebook. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, everybody knows what, what it's like Tuesday night now. Uh, but anyways, uh, thanks a lot to that and a lot of great other events. We just put up an episode of Rap Gamers uh, from uh, Asafo Digital. Uh, look up a sauce of digital and uh, rap gamers over on uh, his YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook, and Periscope. And uh, we had, um, we were uh, talking uh, some great artists in here doing some freestyles, and they were playing, I'm trying to remember, Skyforce they were playing this past week as well. Uh, plus, we were going to have some, uh, uh, we already have an announcement. I think next Friday we're going to bring back Riz Plays Games at Sorgatron Media. So a little bit more Twitch gaming is going to happen here in the studio and a lot of other fun things. So stay tuned to the events pages. We'll like the pages on Awesome Cast and Sorgatron Media for all the events coming up. So bless you. Uh, that's producer Missy. I just said God bless you for Thank you for helping keeping me straight this episode. She's getting looks. She's turning she turn the mic on. There she is. Hi. Hi. Yeah. So I have to sneeze now to, to get recognition from you at the end. It of the helped. Course. I was going to do it at the end, but you're oh, okay. there. Okay. But uh, also, uh, thank you, John Chichilla, at Chilla on the Twitter, chillatech.net. Chillatech.net, John Chichilla on the Facebook. Say, hey, if you're using um, Anchor, holler at me. I'd love to hear hear someone's story about it. I just signed up with my Facebook account, so I don't know what my username is yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Katie Dudas. Hey. Scarehouse Podcast just put out a good one last week, I think. Yes. Yes. Some things. Lots of things happening. And if I get my way, I'm gonna find I'm gonna do another awesome cast gold with the best porn thing I've found. The Dudsies? Probably, probably ever. ever, ever. I've shared it with Missy's Missy already. It may be the winner oh. of the Dudsy oh. porn award. <laughs> This is going to be an ongoing thing. It's amazing. Thing. Oh, boy. <laughs> and Nate Wright. It involves pizza. Thank you so much for joining us. You got to follow up that. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I got to follow up porn and pizza. Sushi and porn. Uh, okay. All right. You see that in movies all the time. With what? the woman laying down with the sushi on her. What movies are you watching? I'm also getting the wrong title. <laughs> this is actually you. No, no. There you are. There you are. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you designer, simulation, illustrator, all kinds of fun things with Nate. Thank you so much for joining us. Hope you had an awesome experience. He just he just got attacked by the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. That's how I roll. Welcome to podcasting. Uh of course at Sorgatron Twitter. on the Twitter. Check out stuff, everything at SorgatronMedia.com, awesomecast.com. Please subscribe. Please um please rate if you're listening to us on one of those podcast providers, especially iTunes. Uh, I'm still. I, I didn't get any takers. If uh, you leave a, a a rating, a review, take the screen cap, send it in. We might have some swag for you. Might have a T-shirt for you. And I'll uh, autograph it. There you go. <laughs> D- Dutters will we'll all autograph it because yeah. we'll actually all be in studio next week. Yeah. So we could do that. Uh, so even producer Missy. The video is brought to you by Broad Street Pizza. <laughs> no, Slice on Broadway. No, slice on Broadway. <laughs> no, Slice on Broadway. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Awesome Chat Room. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.